Welcome to the PCGS webinar for Grading 102. Today we'll continue our look at difficult to grade coins in part two. As a brief review, uh, we talked about some series that, that were very difficult or tricky to grade. These included pre-1816 copper, pre-1809 silver and gold, three cent silver pieces, proof and mint state issues of uh, often nickel coins of the 1870s and 1880s, Pre-1925 Standing Liberty Quarters in low grade, cap bust halves, type 2 gold dollars, and Indian quarter and half eagles. So today in part two, we'll take a look at the last four on this list. We'll start with the pre-1925 Standing Liberty Quarters. These coins had a raised date on the pedestal, uh, which turned out to be the high point of the coin and uh, the date wore off very quickly. So as a consequence, low-grade examples, which show almost no date, have much more detail than the post-1925 coins. Here's a 1920 Standing Liberty Quarter, which we can only grade good because the date is virtually gone. This coin here is a recess date, which began in 1925, also in the same grade of good, but note the entire coin is far more worn than the 1920 example. And just by way of comparison, here is a post-1924 coin with a recess date, this 1930, and you compare the detail on Liberty on uh, this coin here on the right with the one here on the far left. Uh, the coin on the far right almost grades VF for a um, recess date standing Liberty quarter. Yet this coin on the far left, we can only grade good because of the date. Uh, so it's extremely confusing grading these early Standing Liberty quarters. You must grade by the date because you could, any lower than this, you could not really have a coin graded fine with no date. So uh, these are difficult to grade, particularly in uh, low grade. A lot of mint state uh, cap bust halves struck uh, in the 18 teens, 20s, and 30s show discoloration and flatness on the cheek, which really looks like rub. But the fact of the matter is these coins never circulated. They were handled and stacked by the banks a great deal and often got uh, some friction on the cheek. But you really have to grade these uncirculated because they have full luster and they never really entered circulation, but they display sort of what would look like evidence of rub. And we'll take a look at a few examples. Uh, these all have this sort of rub on the cheek and sort of rub on the high spots, but you see there's pretty much full luster on this coin. Here's another example. Again, a little bit of rub on the cheek. And this 1833 also shows the same evidence of a little bit of light friction. So these cap bust halves, we, we sort of laugh to ourselves and end up calling them AU-63s, which is uh, <laughs> sort of an impossibility, but you, you get the picture, hopefully. These are tough. Next, we'll look at Type 2 gold dollars. Due to their thin planchets and small uh, size, they suffered from the same things that three cent silver suffered from, which is weak strike. Here's a coin that's uh, pretty high grade. You can tell by the amount of detail in the uh, headdress here. But the center part uh, here behind the Eye of Liberty and on the wreath on the back and uh, you know missing a digit from the date and some letters in dollar this coin just had a very very weak strike uh, again particularly look at the center of the reverse on many coins close to uncirculated uh, just nothing is struck and again like the three cent silver you have clash dies and this is uh, really neat here if you take a good look here at the reverse you can see the inverted head this is the chin here and you see the nose, and you see the uh, headdress up here, and here you see the back of the neck and the back of the headdress here. That's impressed on the reverse due to a uh, clash die, which uh, occurred when the obverse and reverse die hit each other without a planchet in between and left an impression on, uh, on each other, so to speak. Here's a coin that suffers from both. You have a weak strike. Uh, you're missing the eight in the digit. And again, you can see the reverse uh, on the reverse, the inverted head. Again, here with the neck and the chin and the nose and the headdress and the back of the neck and the lower part of the neck. 
Indian quarter and half eagles uh, minted between 1908 and 1929 were unique in that the device was sunken below the surface. As a consequence, the fields of the coin are the high point. And since there's no design detail in the, in the fields, this makes these coins very tough to grade. Now take a look at this coin. This is extremely low grade for one of these. It's uh, like a good six. Uh, the date is partially worn away. But if you look in the, in the inner part of the coin, you see almost full detail on the eye, the nose, the mouth, the uh, center part of the neck here. Uh, almost looks uncirculated. And uh, once again, if this coin were a conventional coin with the device above the fields, uh, you wouldn't see this. And same thing here sort of on the eagle. You see a lot of feathers on the eagle that you would not ordinarily see on a coin this low. Uh, the higher fields here are very well worn with much of the lettering already worn away. So uh, this, these, are, th these are very unusual coins. Here's an XFAU and again showing virtually all the detail, but uh, you can see quite a few marks and scratches in the fields, which uh, again were the part of the coin that took much of the friction, but there's uh, quite a bit of luster left on this coin. Uh, the way we distinguish AU from mint state uh, pieces is to look carefully at the field uh, for very small scratches because you're not going to see rub on the devices. So if you take a quick look here at the blow up, this is an AU coin and you look uh, here at the device, you see almost nowhere. But if you look in the fields here, you see lots of very small scratches and marks indicating that the coin is lightly circulated. And this would be a close up of a mint state coin uh, showing virtually the same amount of detail uh, on the eagle, which is sunken, but the fields of course are much cleaner displaying none of the marks and scratches that were on the AU coin. So that is um, grading difficult to grade coins. Now uh, it's uh, very uh, complicated to master some of these areas and it takes much practice and experience. So we hope uh, these videos have helped gain some insight.